everybody, I'm Matt Murray from Isotope. And I'm Evan Allen from Isotope. Welcome back to the fourth and final video in our Intro to Mastering series that we're shooting here at Reverb.com. Uh, we covered EQ in a previous video, we covered uh, compression and limiting in our last video. Uh, now we're going to talk about a few of the other modules in Ozone or other processing steps we can take and maybe some more advanced topics. So I know we were talking about multiband processing a little bit. Can, can you show us some of that here? Absolutely. Um, so for that, let's jump into uh, the dynamics module here. Um, so the track we're dealing with is uh, called Continuum by an artist Symbionic. Um, it's a really cool track. It's got a really thick, good low end, which is um, one of the reasons we wanted to pull this into here. Okay. So uh, again, I've, I've loaded up the dynamics module, and up at the top we have our four different bands. Um, so these are, again, essentially four completely different compressors that we can really tailor to each different free section of the frequency spectrum. Um, so the first thing we need to do when we load up any multiband processing is figure out what frequency content's going to be in each of those bands, and that's these sort of uh, bars up at the top here, and you can see we're stretching uh, to say where each compressor is going to go. So each color there represents a, a separate compressor we'd be using. Exactly. These are also completely four different compressors. Now that said, uh, I don't really think I need four right now. So, uh, I'm going to hit the minus sign again just to bring it down to three. Okay. Um, so again, the first thing we need to do is define where that is. If we're not sure, one thing we can do is hit the learn button. As soon as I start playback, it's going to, Ozone by itself is going to listen to the incoming audio signal and decide where's the best place to drop these, they're called crossovers, okay. uh, these frequencies. So I'm going to start playback and hit learn. And right now, Ozone is figuring out where the best places for these are. And that's based on the energy in the track itself? So it's based on the amount of energy and the amount of phase shift that, incur that is incurred by dropping that cross over there. Because okay. we are ultimately sending this audio through different filters Basically in order to separate it, them. Sending it to three different compressors and then combining it back again. Exactly. Okay. So with these little S buttons, we can solo what's in each band. So this is our middle band. Here's our low. Oh, so we can hear just what frequencies that compressor will be attacking. Okay. Exactly. That's only what's going to be affected by that compressor. And then the high end as well here. It's a lot of like hi-hats, uh, airiness, things like that. So at this point, uh, again, the, the kick drum is quite aggressive in this track, which is awesome, and it's an important part of the, uh, the overall emotion of this piece. But we want to make sure that it's not going to be really slamming into the limiter once it eventually goes through that. So probably want to pull back on that just a little bit. So we talked before about the, the compressor threshold, ratio, attack, and release. Mm -hmm. The other control we have here is the knee. Um, and essentially, so if we have a knee of zero, we're setting a very definitive threshold. So anything, as soon as it hits negative 12 dB, that's where compression is gonna start. Mm -hmm. A knee sort of smooths that out, so it's anything a little bit below that as well will start to trigger the compressor. Over that, it's gonna be a little bit smoother. If we wanna keep these transients again in a kick drum, we really wanna feel that punch through. Yeah. I would generally keep a knee rear very low or none at all. And I'm gonna turn on auto again to make sure that we're not losing energy there. It's automatically making up the volume that you're, okay. Exactly. I'll probably increase the ratio a bit here because we're dealing with that low end. So bypassed. And on. Yeah, you definitely hear the difference in that kick drum. And, and you'll be able to feel it too. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's great that meter too. You can see that red, um, indication shows up every time the kick comes. Oh yeah, there's a great way to look at it too. You can see right where those, those kicks are. Um, so some other types of process that we may do here. So we've talked about EQ, we've talked about compression, multiband compression. Some other things that we may want to do, it's, it's all the sort of more aesthetic words that you would use to describe music, like warmth, uh, spacious, airy. And that's some of the more advanced sort of processing that we can do with ozone. So let's say that again, uh, I don't believe it for this song, but let's say this song was sort of brittle sounding and uh, sort of cold, sort of sterile. Yeah. Um, a tool we'd often turn to then is an exciter. So this essentially is going to bring out additional harmonics. Mm -hmm. um, it is a very sort of light form of distortion almost. It's going to bring out additional harmonics there, which to our ear is very pleasing. Okay. 
Now, one thing with this is a little bit goes a long way. Um, with any sort of this processing, again, because we're doing it across the entire track, you can overdo things easily. Have Ozone learn where this is. And while that's learning, you'll see that we have a few different modes up here. And this is going to simulate the harmonics brought out by different, sorts, uh, different sources here. So if I want to bring a little bit of tube warmth to this, I can select the tube mode, and just in the low end here, bring out a little bit more. So Again, this is something you're doing pretty subtly. Yes, very subtle. So bypassed. So the harmonic exciter is something you can often turn to to get a little bit more, a uh, little bit more energy behind your song. Yeah. Now the other thing I wanted to talk about was uh, stereo imaging processing. Okay. So for that, we're going to jump over to our imager. And one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this is this is something that uh, it is very, it's a delicate tool to use. Mm -hmm. um, what this does is, so I mean, when we mix music, generally we're mixing in stereo, so there's a left channel and a right channel. Sure. And depending on how much content is, you know, either dead center or to the sides, tracks can sometimes sound a bit too, like, clustered right up in the center. It's not a very interesting stereo image. Mm -hmm. This tool allows you to throw a bit more towards the side, so it's going to sound perceivably wider um, okay. to the listener. So again, this is multi-band. One of the things I'm gonna do though here is, uh, so while I'm saying you know width is a really good thing, it can easily be overdone, and in certain situations could even be a bad thing. Um, typically, it's accepted that you wanna keep your low end pretty close to mono. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a tool we can use that basically collapses that low end towards mono. So I'm just gonna remove two of these bands, so we just have our low band and the high band here. Uh, we're gonna separate it out so we get some of that low synth energy in there. Let's okay. check it out. Okay, so yeah, I'm hearing a lot of that kick and also definitely the, some of the lower frequencies of that bass synth. You'll notice here as well, we have this sort of really cool visualization here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually very, very useful. This is the vector scope, and we have a few different ways of visualizing um, our audio as it comes through. It's showing the left-right balance of the mix. Exactly, so what it's showing is, um, so left and right balance uh, down at this bottom here, and then this guy here is very important. This is showing the similarities between uh, phase correlation, so between the left and right channel. Mm -hmm. You'll find that in certain situations, if you have too much out of phase information, uh, once your track has collapsed into mono, which happens when somebody's listening on their cell phone, uh, or even in clubs and restaurants and all, sure. that information is actually going to disappear, like it never existed. <laughs> okay. That's something you don't want in your low end, because again, if you've been working on this track for ages, and you crafted this awesome, powerful kick for the club, and then it's gone. Um, so these tools are very important to keep an eye on. We can see this little guy over here, mm -hmm. this looks pretty solid. There are no problems going on here. Um, if we go towards the high end, we'll probably see a little bit wider. As soon as this ducks below zero, we want to watch out because we may have some phase correlation issues at okay. that point. We can always double check this by hitting mono. So in this case, I would like to so narrow my low end, even though it's pretty narrow, just a little bit here, and listen to what happens to the high end when I boost it. You're going to start to listen to everything and hear it go, uh, again, sort of push towards the sides and it's a bit wider, and then I'm going to pull it the other way and it's going to be collapsed to mono. So take a listen. So again, this is a tool to be careful with because a little bit goes a long way. So those are some other tools that uh, would be used a bit more sparingly in mastering, um, but multiband processing is a very powerful tool, uh, specifically, again, uh, especially rather, uh, with things like EDM and hip hop, um, have a huge low end. The Exciter, which is a great tool, again, just bring out some warmth, bring out a little bit more energy, bring things a little bit more in your face, and stereo imaging processing. Uh, again, careful of the low end, uh, making sure everything's got a nice engaging stereo image. 
but using it within reason. Okay. Great, yeah, because it really all is about subtle processing at this page. You're, yep. <laughs> you're, you're, you're just putting on that final coat of gloss to get your track ready to go out into the world. Mm -hmm. cool. Exactly. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everybody, for sticking with our series. If you want to learn more about Ozone or any other Isotope products, check them out on Reverb Sync. Thanks a lot for watching our video.